Hi, my name is Damien Wills, owner and chief pilot of GoFly Aviation, and welcome to this week's GoFly Quick Tips. Now this week we're going to be looking at the difference between a normal in-flight engine failure and an in-flight fire, whether that's electrical or a petrol engine fire, and we're going to look at how we handle those two different types of emergencies. We're also going to incorporate that into my six monthly instructor check, which I'll be conducting with one of my instructors who's due for his check today. And so we're going to be looking at introducing this new emergency procedure into our training syllabus. So I'm going to be putting Nathan through his paces a little bit also. Okay, let's go flying. Okay, Nathan, so we're going to do our uh, six monthly instructor check and we're going to do a bit of a refresher today as well. So I want you to demonstrate what you'd normally demonstrate for uh, an engine failure overhead the field at around two and a half thousand feet. And then we're going to mix it up a bit. I want to uh, look at what happens if you have an engine fire um, above the airfield at 2,500 feet and uh, how we handle that emergency. So I'm going to play the uh, play, pretend that I'm the uh, student and I want you to be the instructor and pattern me through it while I fly it and I'll just give you some feedback on what I think you might need to change. Okay, okay. sounds good. So what do you think the major difference are between um, uh, in a real engine fire, uh, sorry, a, an engine fire where the engine stops and we, when we experience an engine, engine fire? Uh, so I would think the, the difference between when you have an engine failure in flight yep. versus an engine fire in flight. Yep. The main difference is firstly you're going to be, or the engine failure, you're going to be uh, trying to maximise your time in the air. Yep. And you're going to adopt, adopt fast glide speed of 70 knots. Yep, sure. Um, for the engine fire you're going to want to get down on the ground as fast as you possibly can. Yep. Uh, you've only got about two minutes or so, two and a half minutes, three minutes yep. before that fire engulfs the rest of the aircraft. Yep. So you do want to get it down on the ground as fast as possible. So, whereas the engine failure, you want to maximise the time in the air. Yep. Engine fire, you want to get down as fast as you can. Very good. Okay, so yeah, so we want to keep it around about 100, 105 knots for an engine fire. Obviously turn everything off. Um, maybe turn your master off and just put it on again if you want to select flap. Yep. We don't want to leave an electrical source on, but everything off, like you said, fuel in particular. Um, obviously it's going to be an engine failure. Keep it at 100, 105 knots till we get to the halfway down base final. Uh, then we can trade our attitude for airspeed, uh, bring the airspeed back and then select flap if we can use flap that is cool. uh, and land at our, our normal uh, approach speed um, about halfway down final at 70 knots. Yep. So I want you to uh, pretend you're the instructor, I'll pretend I'm a student, pattern me through it but if I see any issues there I'll just give you some feedback. Cool, sounds good. Great. We're going to simulate the engine failure. In yep in the uh, overhead. Yep. So I want you to bring the power back to idle. So you just simulate okay. that, you're the instructor. Yep. So yep. I'll bring that back to idle there. So okay. we've got the engine failure. Yep. So the cool. first thing we want to do is trim for 70 knots. Yep. That's our best glide. Okay. Power. All right, this second. So now we're going to maintain our 70 knots. Yep. Keep our descent and keep our field in sight. Yep. We're also going to switch to Brisbane Centre and make a mayday call. Yep. All right. So the mayday call is just going to be uh, Brisbane Centre, mayday, 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 sling 8668 has expansion engine failure. We're over the head, over the field of Caloundra, descending yep. through 2,000 feet. POV2 and we're going to squawk 7700 on our transponder. Okay. We're low wing sling aircraft white. Yep. Okay, we're going to conduct a go around a sec, Nathan. So just give cool. me the, uh, we're almost on the ground. So what's the rough time? Uh, the rough time is three minutes exact, almost four minutes exact. No. Yeah, three minutes exactly. Three minutes exactly? Okay. Okay, Nathan. So we're almost at uh, two and a half thousand above the airfield again. Uh, so I want you to uh, now simulate a fire, engine board fire. So basically, I want you to pattern me through it. Uh, I'll fly, but you pattern me through what to do. Okay. So the major difference is that we um, we're going to be doing you know 100 to 105 knots all the way down to our base leg. Yep. And we're not going to get flat, flap out, and we're actually going to slow it down just before we turn final approach. Okay. Okay. So we want to look at the time difference there. Yep. And I want you to pattern me through what you think you do in that emergency. Okay. And we'll have a talk about it afterwards. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So I'm now acting as student. Sound of traffic out south. X-ray is clear. Runway is flounder. You do, the, you do the radio call and yep. simulate. So we'll pull the power there. Sound traffic sling 8668 is overhead the field and uh, simulating a force landing on runway 05. Sound traffic. Force traffic. Yep. So we've had, so so we've had the engine, or we say we've got an engine fire. Yep. What we're going to do is we're going to start turning everything off first of okay, all. Okay, everything off. Right. We're going to switch our fuel off as well. Yep. And we'll Hold hold, we'll hold our masters for our flap. Yep. Right. If it's an electrical fire though, we yep. should actually we maybe turn it off that, and yep. then turn it on quickly for flap. Yep, fair enough. Alright. Keeping the field inside, we're going to want yep. to get down as fast as we can. Yep. Okay, so we've got 105 knots, which is just below my um, yellow arc. Okay, so yep. obviously extra airflow might put the fire out. Yep. But there's a very good chance it won't. Uh, and the fact we've got fuel off too, there's a good chance it might go out as well. But once again, we still need to get on the ground as soon as possible because you don't always know if that fire's still on. 
still burning or not until you're on the ground. You also want to make sure that when you do slow down for the landing that yep. we are below the white arc for flap. Yep. So when do I start slowing down, do you think? Uh, I'd keep going for now. Yep. Good. And, and start slowing as we get closer in. Make yep. sure we're 100% confident we're going to get in the field. Yep. Um, then we can slow it down and get ourselves down. Yeah, I think I'm on a close base now. We don't want to get too yeah. low of these houses, so yeah. I'll start slowing it down. Yep, bit of flap. Oh, well, thanks, Nathan. You did well today. A uh, few little things I need to work on, but overall really good. Yep. Um, you enjoy that? Yeah, I loved it. Okay, good. Always so great learning more. Yep. So we'll um, we might start introducing that to our students now, uh, and just showing them the difference between the time. Yep. And it's just a really good lesson for a student to learn that the importance of, of getting on the ground as soon as possible if we have an engine fire. Yeah. Definitely. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I think. Well, thanks for joining me today on the GoFly Quick Tips. I hope you understand now the major difference between a standard engine fire and an engine fire or electrical fire is time. We just don't have time when we have an in-flight fire and we need to get it on the ground as soon as possible. Okay, happy and safe flying and see you next week.